Hey guys, how's it going? Okay, you're probably wondering why I only have one half of an eyebrow. It's just that I was waxing my eyebrows and I had a little accident, but no biggie. Your girl's gonna pencil them in just as soon as I find my brow pencil. Ruby, you're gonna be late for school, again. What am I supposed to use, lipstick? Ugh. Oh, magic marker. Guys, please don't give me that judgy look. I can't go to school without eyebrows. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant to introduce myself. I'm Ruby and I live in Montana with my parents as an only child. Oh, uh, before I continue, would you all mind hitting that like and subscribe button? Sorry, my director will fire me if I don't tell you guys that. Anyway, I live with my parents, but I'm not really close to them, and I don't relate to them either. It's not that mom and dad are bad parents, it's just that they're possibly the most boring people on the planet. Oh, let's face it, you won't ever be a normal, responsible adult. You silly thing. You probably wouldn't even notice if your own head fell off. Whoa! Rude! Also, I'm only 13, Mom. I don't want to think about marriage. But Mom disagreed. In fact, she wanted to get me engaged right now. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. She just wanted me to meet my potential fiancé hoping he'd fall in love with me and propose after high school. So in eighth grade, she introduced me to her friend's son, Grayson, who was a couple of years older than me. And a triple package. Handsome, smart, and planning on starting his own company one day. So, gremlin. Grayson. <laughs> totally. So, um, your biceps, they're huge. I've never seen biceps that big before. And not that they look bad. They look very, very fine. Sorry, did that sound creepy? I swear, I'm not a creep. Please kill me. Oh, I can't kill you. Sorry, I really can't go to jail for murder right now. At least not until the new Wednesday series gets canceled. Anyway, this has been a lovely meeting, Mr. Healthy Looking Biceps. Keep up the good work. Boy, that was awkward. I guess Grayson won't be my future husband after all. But secretly, I did really want a boyfriend. So that summer before ninth grade, I decided to give myself a makeover. A new skincare routine, a healthier diet, and a better wardrobe. Though when I was shopping at the mall for my wardrobe, things got a little crazy. While I was picking out dresses, I also decided to get some new bras. But just as I was walking into the changing room, I ran into my crush. His name was Colin, and I hadn't seen him all summer. He he looked a million times more handsome. Hey, dude. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> These aren't mine. They're for my mom. Your mom likes bras with unicorns on them? No. I mean, what's wrong with unicorns? Do you have a problem with them? Because that's just racist. I ran off before Colin could answer. That didn't exactly go well. And when I got home, things just got worse. I found out mom's friend's son Grayson was going to start volunteering for her company. Remember that handsome snow? with the enormous biceps. He wasn't exactly thrilled that we'd be seeing each other all the time at the house and at social gatherings. Pfft, as if I was excited about it. Ignore stupid handsome Grayson. Back to my glow-up makeover. Not to brag, but I looked like a knockout the first week of ninth grade, and everyone showered me with compliments, including mom and dad. Finally, you cleaned yourself up a little. Look, sweetie, our ugly duckling has turned into a swan. Mom! She looked beautiful before, and she looks beautiful beautiful now. I don't get what the big deal is. She just caked on 10 layers of makeup to make herself look like a Barbie doll and put on flashy clothes. I just rolled my eyes hearing that. Of course the jerk had nothing nice to say about me. Well, his opinion didn't matter because the following week at school, guess who finally noticed me? My longtime crush, Colin. Even after our embarrassing unicorn bra encounter, he asked me out to a movie and a couple weeks later, we started dating. Talk about the perfect start to a girl's teenagehood and high school career career. Colin writes me good morning texts and takes Instagram selfies with me. I remember the olden days when I was a sad, lonely girl, but now my life is perfect. On the night before winter break, Colin took me to an exclusive cool kids party. But just as I was getting ready to leave, I saw Grayson waiting for me outside. What the frick was he doing here? And how did he even know where I was? Your parents asked me to come check on you and then drive you home. You're at a midnight party with your boyfriend, Ruby. Someone needs to supervise you. Who do you think you are? My dad? You can do whatever you want, but I don't need any supervision. I meant to do that. Anyway, I'm gonna go kiss my boyfriend now, so bye! I just hope he's available to kiss you. I saw him looking pretty happy talking to some other girl a few minutes ago. Yeah, because it's a crime to talk to other girls when you have a girlfriend. Grayson, get a life. He was really starting to get on my nerves. So to stick it to him, I took the bus home, and he had to drive all the way back to his house for nothing. It served him right for being such a control freak. Freak. Unfortunately, though, I couldn't see Colin after the party because he was going on vacation. I knew he'd be busy, but a week went by 
and he didn't call or text at all. Okay, <laughs> no reason to panic. Couples need space. I totally get it. I had other stuff going on in my life. I went to a yoga class, read books, painted my nails. Finally, when we got back to school, I searched everywhere for Colin. I didn't have much luck until I wandered into the school garden to find him kissing another girl. Ahem! <clears throat> oh, Ruby. Uh, sorry, I meant to tell you. I'm getting back with my ex-girlfriend. We've sort of been on a break, which is why I asked you out, because I was still getting over this precious girl. So I was just your rebound? You are such a jerk! How could you use someone like that? I'm sorry. You're really great and all, but I just wasn't feeling those magical sparks between us, you know? I just smacked him across the face and told him we were done. And then to really stick it to him, I texted Colin, we're done, three more times over text message. The truth was, though, I felt really depressed about my breakup. I mean, yeah, I was mad at Colin for what he did, but I was more mad at myself for believing he'd actually cared about me. I distracted myself the next few days by hanging out at the pet shelter and keeping the kittens company. It was exciting. Exactly the heartbreak therapy I needed. I was even starting to feel better until Dad called me, begging me to come home and help him prepare for a fancy work dinner. But when I arrived at the house, Grayson was already in the kitchen with his sleeves rolled up. Ugh. I just knew my parents had told him about my breakup, and he was waiting to rub it in my face. I asked Grayson over to help us cook since your mom isn't home yet. Yeah, and also, cause your dad told me you don't know how to cook. Did you seriously start a fire trying to deep fry ice cream? First of all, the fried ice cream disaster wasn't my fault. I just happened to forget to watch the tutorial first. And second, I've had a really hard couple of days, and I don't have the energy to handle you right now. So just go away and don't talk to me for the rest of the night. But you can hang out in my room if you want and use my computer if you're bored. May I recommend MSA videos? Watch them on YouTube, though, not TikTok, because TikTok's bad for your attention span. But anyway, see ya! Unfortunately, Dad didn't let me get rid of the idiot that easily. And as expected, Grayson took full advantage of getting to boss me around and talk to me like I was an idiot. Go salt the water. Don't put sugar. Put salt. You're not allowed to touch the knife. I don't trust you around a knife. I felt just about ready to punch him until Grayson came up behind me and guided my hands in rolling the dough with his big, strong arms. It even made my heart rate go fast. I guess it was a good form of cardio exercise. Nice job. You know, you actually don't suck at this. Mom was quite late, but when she finally came, she was with her boss and his arm was around her. What was that about? Then at the dinner table, Mom and Dad's boss made an announcement. Excuse me, may I have everyone's attention? I would like to introduce my new co-owner of the company. Audrey Darling, congratulations. That also brings me to my other news. The two of us have decided to restart our business in Australia, and we'll be moving there in a month. What do you mean? We're gonna be moving in a month? No, I'll be moving. Actually, I'm divorcing you. I'm just not happy with our life here, and I need a change. I hope you'll understand. My heart stopped as I saw Dad's stunned face, and all the guests staring at us. Many of them were strange. I barely knew. The whole thing was just this surreal, unexpected mess. And fast forward two months later, mom was gone, dad was a wreck, and I was still numb with shock. I didn't exactly have time to cry and grieve though, cause I had to take over the house since dad wouldn't leave his bedroom. Three guesses how that went. Yeah. I broke our dishwasher, also our oven, and killed all our house plants cause I forgot to water them. Not that I was surprised. It was like mom said, I was just too dumb to ever be able to take care of myself let alone dad too. One day, I just couldn't take the stress anymore and literally fell asleep on the kitchen floor. When I opened my eyes, Grayson was staring down at me and for some reason, it made me feel relieved. Ruby, are you okay? Um, no, I'm not. You know, you don't have to do this all by yourself. I can help you. I'm here for you. I don't want your help. You don't have to suddenly be nice to me now just because you feel sorry for me. I know you hate me. Who said I hated you? I don't hate you at all. All those times I insulted you, I was just teasing. But I'm sorry. I guess I just don't know how to act around a girl I think is cute. Wait, Grayson thought I was cute? No, that wasn't possible. Perfect, handsome, and smart guys like him don't think girls like me were cute. Well, okay, with my glow up, I'm a little bit cute. Like Ariana Grande, K-pop cute. But my cuteness was all I had going for me. I didn't have any other good qualities. So yeah, I didn't believe Grayson's words for a second. But for some reason, he stuck around for several days after that and basically forced me to rest and take care of myself. One night, I was even having cramps and he made me tea. Thanks for all this. I really appreciate it. Just uh, one follow-up question.
question. You said I was cute the other day, right? Yeah, what about it? What do you see in me, man? I mean, I know I kinda got pretty after my makeover. Again, with you and your dumb makeover that I never even cared for. Ruby, you're funny, you're charming, you're interesting, and hands down, the kindest person I've ever met. Why isn't that enough for you? How come you don't believe in yourself? Grayson's words really <gasps> caught me off guard. I didn't really have an answer for him. Well, actually, I kinda did. The truth is, it's hard to have confidence in yourself when you're always bumping into walls, losing your stuff, and eating soap. Okay, calm down. I've only eaten soap once, and it was an accident. Basically, I was in some fancy hotel, and they had some tiny soap bars in the bathroom that looked like candy. So I ate one. I don't actually eat soap on a daily basis. But you get my point, right? Animator, show the reference scene of 14-year-old me making myself over that summer. Remember when I felt super confident after my major glow-up? Yeah, that wasn't real confidence. Real confidence isn't based on stuff like outside beauty and high IQ. Real confidence comes from loving yourself no matter what. So I guess now it's time for makeover number two, feeling good on the inside. And a few months later, I did start to feel a lot better. And apparently, confidence is a lot more attractive than looks anyway. Because one morning, freaking Colin showed up at my doorstep, begging me to take him back. Which do you want? A bouquet of roses or lilies? Or would you prefer chocolates? A life-size teddy bear? What do you want from me? I'd like for you to get off my porch. Also, I don't like either of these bouquets. I'm just not feeling a magical spark. I was about to throw the flowers in the loser's face when suddenly Grayson showed up behind me because he was already over at my house. We'd gotten super close over the last few months, and between you and me, I've developed major feelings for him. I guess that explains why I was happy when he sprung onto Colin and tackled him to the ground. The boys were like animals, full on rolling into the bushes, and I certainly didn't mind watching the spectacle. Come on, ladies, admit it. Who doesn't love it when boys fight over you? Finally though, Colin ended up leaving, and Grayson pulled me into a very pleasant hug. So, when do we get to have our first kiss? Maybe we can have a beach date tonight? Because I really don't want to kiss you next to loud traffic. Animator! Hey, me again. Can Grayson and I maybe have a nicer setting for our first kiss? Yeah, keep going. This is supposed to be my romantic moment, dude. Oh, yeah, I like the sunset. Perfect, thanks. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed hearing my insane drama. If you want more stories in this style,